And um, I'm wondering if you might um, speak a little bit. You talked about as deputy secretary that you'd be the chief operating officer for the department, which is so important, overseeing all of the uh, operations and the workforce of over 100,000 employees who I think we need to thank every day. They've been through a lot. And, um, uh, and, and we certainly appreciate um, all of their work. Um, working with uh, Secretary Vilsack and so on to deliver on the mission, from our perspective as we write the Farm Bill, the partnership with the USDA has never been more important as we work on all of these issues that, that are so important. Could you talk a little bit more about your priorities if confirmed as the Deputy Secretary and how, you, how do you plan to use the lessons that you've learned from your time as Undersecretary of Rural Development as you go to this new role? When I uh, started working as Undersecretary for Rural Development, I, I realized that there's a real need to focus on operations because it is fundamental to making sure that rural people have the rural development that they deserve. That there are programs that are easy to access and although sometimes that's about looking at the regulations which would come under the purview of deputy secretary, sometimes it's also about the technology, making sure that the system that we're investing in works well on the front end for customer service and that we're prioritizing those investments. Sometimes it also is about having an onboarding strategy that truly prepares the next generation of USDA workforce to be customer service focused and to have those skills to provide that outreach. Uh, so as if confirmed as Deputy Secretary, I, I would want to focus on being that customer service agency that our farmers and rural people rely on and all of the back end work that supports that effort. Absolutely. When we look at transitioning, because I mean, you've done a terrific job in your current role, and rural development has been tasked with implementing a number of really important things, including the largest investment in rural electric since the New Deal. And so if you're confirmed, how will you ensure a smooth transition with the person coming in um, after you? And how do you hope to continue your own leadership on rural issues. Rural development has done some incredible things in the last two years, and it's because of a great team. When we look at uh, the work, the investment that's been received through the Inflation Reduction Act, through the bipartisan infrastructure law, being the first to get funds out for infrastructure for high-speed internet, it was a team that worked day in and day out together. Uh, my role as undersecretary ended up being focusing on a lot of those operations that would keep our team going into the future. And so one of the things that I did early on is prioritize employee meetings all across the country because rural development is uh, like other parts of USDA but pretty unique across the federal government. We have over 450 offices across the country and people living in the communities they serve. So it was really important for me to go and listen to them. And out of those meetings, we put together an executive report called Team RD that identified some of the key challenges that, that, are, that folks are facing, like continuity in the hiring process or outdated technology, and identified priorities for how we can best address them. That was going to be my, my blueprint for the next two years, but now hopefully it'll be a great guide for uh, whoever comes in as undersecretary. We've also set up a state office of operations led by Director Basil Goodman, who's done an incredible job uh, making sure that our field operations remain connected to program design that happens in headquarters. Having that consistent channel of communication will be crucial for the long term. Great, and thanks. Uh, uh, let me ask a little bit more about local foods, and Senator Brown was talking about that, but local and regional food systems, because obviously USDA is playing a critical role, and there's opportunities now to reach out to support more local processing or regional processing or uh, urban agriculture or a whole range of things that really broaden uh, people's understanding and support for agriculture as well as access to healthy foods. But would you talk a little bit more from your perspective about uh, what it means to be building or strengthening local and regional food systems and uh, I'm assuming that you will work with this committee and work with me to make sure we, we are doing that, but would love to have any further thoughts that you have on that. 
Rural development has had a great opportunity in the wake of COVID um, to invest in food system resiliency. And a fundamental part of that is multiple options when it comes to markets. Uh, so when I was in uh, Florida, for example, I got the chance to meet a rancher who diversified his markets, uh, investing in the bull line as well as cattle and uh, grass-fed cattle, but also doing a U-Pick blueberry because he was connecting to and facing, uh, connecting to people who were coming to visit Disney World, but also wanted another experience. And so he was able to keep his farm in operation, even though he was facing significant land pressures, because he was finding ways to connect people to that new industry. I think there's opportunities like that, place-based opportunities in Michigan with cherries, which you take great advantage of, and all across the country. Great. Thank you very much.